Hi, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz, and this is Red Giant TV. Man, I love the holidays. Arguing with family around the table and putting on extra pounds and, you know, making New Year's resolutions that I'll never keep. <sighs> the joy of it all. Okay, well, the truth is, I've never made a New Year's resolution that I didn't keep, which is to say I've, well, never actually made a New Year's resolution. I know myself well enough. But this year's different. I'm going to break from tradition and I'm gonna make a New Year's resolution if you'll keep it with me. And that resolution is better compositing. That's right, we're going to do better compositing in 2009. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Better compositing? I can't even commit to doing 10 extra sit-ups a day, not unless I gear up for it by eating a fudge brownie first. You want me to add more into my workload? Well, how about this then? Better compositing with less work. Oh, that's right, you heard me. We're going to find better ways to composite by using the right finishing tools. Don't get me wrong, I mean, I love MacGyver, but compositing is no place to use a ball of yarn and a turkey baster to get the job done. So let's look at a few tools and techniques for getting a better composite or for speeding up your compositing work. I'm not gonna talk about keying here. That is the art of removing an actor or object from a green or blue background. We'll leave that for another time. Although I'll mention that if you want a nice trick for making keying easier in After Effects, look up my tutorial called Super Tight Junk Mats, which you can find at Creative Cow. I'll leave a link for it in the Red Room blog here at RedGiantSoftware.com. But assuming you've already done your keying, or maybe you're just incorporating elements from Photoshop or a 3D program, there's a lot more to compositing than just slapping things together into the same composition. The first thing I want to talk about is called a light wrap. Often, in real life, when there's light coming from behind a subject, the light tends to spill over or wrap the subject. In other words, the background affects the foreground, especially around the edges. But when you composite, this doesn't happen automatically, and the lack of a light wrap is a big giveaway that the footage is composited. Remember, in general, the goal of compositing is to make it look as natural as possible, and without that light around the edges, it probably won't. Now, if you're an After Effects user, let me recommend Red Giant Software's KeyCorrect Pro, a set of 15 plugins that can be used in combination with any keyer to soften alpha channels, match foreground and background colors, fix outlines, and clean up noise. It'll help you improve the results you get from keyers like Primat Keyer, Keylight, which ships with Adobe After Effects, and Ultimat. Of the 15 plugins in KeyCorrect Pro, and there are a bunch that'll help you in this kind of work, one of my favorites is Light Wrap, which, not surprisingly, helps blend the foreground element, namely your actor, into the background. And it does this by creating the illusion that light from the background layer is being reflected onto the foreground layer as if they were photographed in the same environment. So I would select my keyed footage, and I would choose Effect, Key Correct, Light Wrap. And then I jump into the Effects panel and set the background layer to the background footage. Just so you can see what's happening here, I'll set the operation property to wrap on black. As you can see, the background is being used to outline the foreground. And there are other controls here, such as background blur, which lets you blur the colors a bit more, or the width, which lets you give it more or less wrap, something you would adjust depending on how close your subject was to the camera. Now, for those of you not in After Effects, and frankly, even for those of you using After Effects, let me just mention that Red Giant's keying solution, Primat Keyer, comes integrated with a light wrap tool that pretty much functions in the same way. It also has many other integrated options and tools that'll help you get a superior composite. I'm personally a fan of the way in which you can select colors for the background removal. There's also a de-artifactor that can get rid of DV and HDV artifacts, which can kill your composite around the edges. KeyCorrect Pro, by the way, also has a de-artifactor. Forgot to mention that. Anyway, I'm moving off the subject here. Uh, There's just so much to talk about. In Primat, you go down to the bottom of the effects controls and go into the composite controls, and you'll see a property called background layer. Set that to your background layer, and then twirl down the section called light wrap. And there we have similar features to the ones we just talked about. Turn on Enable Light Wrap by clicking on the checkbox, and then set the property called Comp Mode from None to Over, or maybe to Screen. From there, you'll want to play with the Width and Background Blur properties, as we did before. Anyway, Primat Keyer works in After Effects, Apple Final Cut Pro, Motion, and Avid Express and Media Composer. And if you buy it for one application, you get it for all that run on your platform. Another often overlooked area in compositing is color matching. When you composite, by nature, 
you're taking people or objects that were filmed in different environments. And those environments have an impact on the colors in your footage. When you put those elements together, they won't necessarily look good together because their colors are at odds with each other. In this shot, for example, I've already added a light wrap, but it's not enough. Clearly, the subject was filmed in a different environment. The skin tones don't match the background lighting at all. Not a good composite. But there are a lot of color matching techniques that you could use with some of the color correction tools that your software comes with, many of them painstaking and time consuming. But I'd like to propose a different solution, one that uses Red Giant Software's Magic Bullet Looks, a plugin that works in After Effects, Premiere Pro, Apple Final Cut Pro, Motion, and Avid Express and Media Composer. And as usual with Red Giant products, if you buy it for one application, you get it for all that run on your platform. Now, normally, Magic Bullet Looks is used to create different film looks by color correcting. I've already talked about it in a previous episode of Red Giant TV, and I can promise you that I'm going to be talking about it again and again. Despite the fact that it's advertised as a tool for enhancing the look of your footage, I found it very useful in compositing and motion graphics as well. Anyway, I'll apply Magic Bullet Looks to this shot, and uh, depending on what program you're using, it's going to be done differently in each one. Um, once I've done that, I'll go into Looks Builder, and I'll choose a preset. I'm particularly a fan of this one called Neo, which gives everything that matrix green look. But there are over 100 other preset options, and you can alter these or just make your own looks too. Anyway, if I click OK to confirm, when I get back into my composition, I can see that the colors match up a lot better. And if you're thinking, what, I'm going to color correct one shot? Then it'll look really odd. Well, that's true. If you're not color treating all of your footage, a shot like this would kind of stick out. But let me just point out to you that virtually every film and TV show is color treated to some degree. But some of the most popular films and TV dramas are heavily shifted into blues and greens and maybe even yellows. Battlestar Galactica and the various CSI shows come to mind. But there are a bunch more. It's becoming more and more common to create these dramatic film looks and it certainly makes it easier for the effects artists working on these shows to do their job. So if you're doing a lot of effects work in a project, consider the fact that it's not only acceptable to color treat your entire project, it's becoming the norm. Finally, I'll mention one more tool, and one that might surprise you. No Light Factory, a tool for generating lens flares and the like. Let's face it, we video artists love our lens flares, but we run into two problems when working with them in our host applications. A, they all look the same, and so people get sick of them, and B, when objects pass in front of them, we have to animate them turning on and off. This second one can be a supreme pain in the buttocks. That's right, the buttocks, and frankly, I've had enough of that. No Light Factory has a ton of fully customizable presets for creating lens flares. There's no limit on the variation in look that you can create, but I'm not going to get into that here. The feature that I want to talk about is one called Obscuration Layer, and it allows you to use the alpha channel of a layer to block the lens flare. In other words, when the object passes in front of a lens flare, it dims or completely disappears the way it would in real life. So in this project, where the subject is standing in front of this virtual backdrop I created in After Effects, I've added in lens flares with no light factory and I'll set each flare to use the actor footage as the obscuration layer. Now when the actor passes in front of the flare, it dims or disappears. No Light Factory runs in After Effects, Premiere Pro, Apple Final Cut Pro, Motion, and Avid Express and Media Composer. And same deal as before for the host applications. And if you're not doing green screening or keying work, this stuff isn't just useful on your live action shots. I thought I would do a test run on a 3D project just to prove the point. In fact, I went back about seven or eight years to some of my earliest 3D work. And well, I've been doing 2D animation for a while, but 3D was new to me. I modeled this, uh, what I thought was a super cool jet bike in 3D Studio Max, and I was really excited to do some sort of animation with it. So this was the original shot. You know, not my best work to date, but uh, man, back then I thought this was the bee's knees. Yeah, we used to say stuff like that back then. Or, you know, maybe it was just me. But of course, forgiving the subject matter itself, the color matching isn't too good. And while I wanted a lens flare in the background, the amount of times that the buildings would block and reveal the light source made it a bit impractical to add. And this is just four seconds. Imagine what it would be like on a much longer shot. So if I added in a light wrap with KeyCorrect Pro, and then a lens flare with no light factory, 
and then some color correction with magic bullet looks, well, this starts to look a lot better, or at least, you know, it starts to look a lot more composed as a shot. Anyway, hopefully some of what we covered here will help you in your compositing work. And to make it just a little easier, we're going to give you a discount on KeyCorrect Pro, Primat Keyer, Magic Bullet Looks, and No Light Factory. Go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get this and other special Red Giant TV deals. Now, these are time-sensitive discounts. They will not last forever. And all coupon codes expire 30 days from the launch date of each tutorial. So again, go to redgiantsoftware.com forward slash promos to get the coupon codes for the most current Red Giant TV discounts. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz, and this is Red Giant TV. See you next time. Mmm. Fudge brownie. Oh yeah.